Patrick Ewing was a warrior on the defensive end and one of the most skilled shooters ever at the center position. A member of the 1992 Dream Team, Ewing is the Knicks' career franchise leader in points, rebounds, blocks, and steals. Patrick Ewing was one of my first heroes uh, in the game of basketball. I, I, I fell in love with basketball watching Patrick play in college and um, followed him religiously diehard Pat Ewing fan. That's why I wore the same number that he wore. Um, and then, of course, when he went to the league and went to the Knicks, all of a sudden the Knicks became relevant. The Knicks became exciting. Uh, one of the great joys for me in my career was to compete against Patrick. I remember the first time being on the court against him in the garden, and I was just in awe. I'll always remember those games in the garden, um, you know, just hearing the PA announcer when Patrick would score. Patrick Ewing! Patrick Ewing! And, uh, man, I still have nightmares about that. <laughs> the first time... Uh, I met the big fella. Big fella was probably my rookie year. Obviously, we had all heard about Patrick Ewing uh, from his Georgetown days, but a natural chance I got a chance to meet him was probably my rookie year when I was in Indiana, and obviously he was with the New York Knicks, um, and probably trying to go in for a layup, and it ended up two rows up, so that was probably my first meeting with him. But I had heard a lot of stories from him through Mark Jackson, who was a very good friend of mine and who was also a rookie. Uh, we came in at the same time, Mark and I did, and he was uh, the point guard for the Knicks at the time. So he was like, I got the best center in the league. You're not going to believe this. I got the best center in the league. Jackson for the trailer Oh, ah, they just call him Beast, you know, Beast of the East. Like, whenever I call him Pat, he hated that. He was like, my name is Beast. So I think me calling him Beast all the time used to pump him, pump him up. and so. So that was his name on the court, he was Beast, Beast. Whenever you hear that, you know that's me calling. You know, when I was coming up, my father always said, hey, I'm gonna make you like Bill Russell, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Wilt Chamberlain. And as a youngster, I used to practice all these old school moves. Old school moves, really old school moves. And then one day I was watching Patrick Ewing at Georgetown. Big guy, mean, physical, throwing people around, running the court. I said, Dad, I want to be like that. He's like, I know, this is why I got you watching the game. So I'm watching Patrick Ewing, he wore number 33, so as I became better, I wanted to be like Patrick Ewing. He was the first guy that, when I played against him, I was actually intimidated. For most of his career, Patrick Ewing was state-of-the-art when it came to NBA centers. Where does he fall in the, the lineage of great NBA big men? When you talk about great NBA centers, Pat Ewing's name is right there. You know, you, you talk about David Robinson, Akeem, Shaq, and even though he didn't win a championship, his name still has to be mentioned with that group just because of how dynamic he was and what he meant to the game of basketball, what he meant to New York City. Patrick Ewing was the New York Knicks heart and soul for so long. He put, put everything into that organization. And as a kid, I grew up watching Pat, loving his game. I actually wore number 33 because I was that big of a Patrick Ewing fan growing up. So he gave the city everything, and I, I, just, I just love him for it. Now, he played in an era where centers were mostly back to the basket guys, but he brought a level of skill to that position that you hadn't seen that often prior to him. Oh, yeah, he was one of those guys that would face up and he had to run and jump shot across the middle. And, and Pat was one of those guys that wasn't, wasn't scared to play outside of the box. He wasn't just going to jump hook you every time and take two or three dribbles and back you down. He had a face-up game, a nice jumper, and he had exquisite touch as well. Averaged 21 and 10 over his 17-year mm. NBA career. He was the guy that showed me how you became great. And it was really through his work ethic. His work ethic, though, was just off the charts. And, and I never forget, we had played a game the night before. And, you know, he didn't have his best game. This was early in the season, my rookie year. And we come into practice the next day. And, and Riley would always say, if practice at 10 is at, is at 10, that means you had to be on the court ready to go tape by 9.30. So, you know, as a rookie, I'm coming into the gym about 8.45. And I looked down on the floor, and Patrick was already in a full sweat. He had already gone through and done his workout. And I was amazed uh, because the definition of hard work, I always thought was about, you know, when practice starts, you give it your all, you do all you can, and then when it's over, it's over. Uh, but that's not what the truly great ones do. You know, it's about honing their craft. And I remember him saying, you know, practice 
you know, it's for the team to get better. But in order for me to achieve my ability, I've got to put in more. And I always admired that about him and, and his work ethic.